Hey everybody, welcome to Movie Time, I'm Sean. Alright guys, so there was a lot of Star Wars news this week. Uh, first off, they announced two new cast members of Star Wars Episode 7. The two actors you have are Lupita Nyong'o and Gwendolyn Christie. Lupita Nyong'o just won an Academy Award for her role in 12 Years a Slave, and Gwendolyn Christie is um, now currently starring in the show Game of Thrones. So two really strong female actors who are going to be playing uh, some parts in the movie that they haven't announced yet. Uh, a lot of the movie uh, websites and uh, shows that I, I read and watch, listen to, they uh, there's been some rumors that they thought that Lupita Nyong'o was actually in talks and was going to get cast in this film. So this is really good news. It never hurts a film to get good actors. In other Star Wars news this week, TMZ has released about 45 pictures of behind the scenes stuff going on uh, on the set of Tatooine in Star Wars Episode 7. This is a, a big deal kind of because uh, it's it's one of the things that in movies now with cameras and camera phones it's it's a good thing that camera phones exist now but overall you can't do anything anymore without somebody taking a picture or recording it and so you have all these pictures that are being leaked they uh, are all from TMZ it looks like and, and you have this film where they're trying to, you know, keep stuff quiet, but you got people over there taking pictures and posting them. So to combat this, J.J. Abrams posted a picture, I think it was on his Twitter, of the um, of a, a little postcard uh, with his name on it saying, I wish people would stop leaking pictures of the Millennium Falcon. They don't know or something along those lines. I'll, I'll show a picture of it right here. I just think it's really funny because in this picture he's actually leaking a slight um, you know, teaser of the Millennium Falcon. In this, in the background that what his uh, little card is sitting on is that little game table that uh, that they they were using. I think it looks like um, almost like you're playing chess back in uh, the earlier Star Wars. So it's pretty interesting. I, I thought this was a really cool tease by J.J. Abrams. I think he's very creative and he does stuff like this every now and then. It's pretty cool. I, I would love to see the Millennium Falcon again in the, the new movies, maybe all spruced up or something. So in some big Marvel news this week, it was announced that they have landed a director for the Doctor Strange movie. Now this is the director of a couple horror movies. He has other movies too is uh, on his belt, but two of the main horror movies he's directed are Sinister and Deliver Us from Evil, which is uh, going to be in theaters I think pretty soon. So you have a, a pretty much like a horror genre director, or a at least a a psychological thriller type uh, you know sci-fi type of director picking up this this title he's gonna be putting his own little touch on it and I think it's pretty interesting it kinda gives you a little a little a little information about what the movie is gonna be like now the the Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange it's not all you know jokes and it's not all just like warm fuzzy feelings inside there's some stuff to it that's pretty dark and so I think that he's gonna be able to put this nice spin on it where you're gonna be able to see a little darker side of the Marvel Universe here now is it gonna work we don't know that yet, but I am excited because it is going to be a different Marvel film than any that we've that any that we've seen so far. So I'm, uh, this is good news for me. Really exciting. Also, this week in an interview, Mark Ruffalo announced that the Hulk's role in this Avengers film, uh, Age of Ultron, is actually going to be a lot bigger than it was in the previous Avenger movie. For a lot of people, his character was the standout of the movie. I definitely think that he did a great job with it. Uh, not to say that Edward uh, Edward Norton Jr. was bad or anything, because I actually liked Edward. Norton Jr. as the Hulk, as Bruce Banner, um, he did a really good, good job himself of, you know, cl staking claim to this character, and I, I definitely liked how he did that. And he's doing all the mocap for it, and he says he's loving it right now. He's having a, a ton of fun with it, and he likes where the technology is, that what he does is being put on the screen as this character. It's really cool, and he loves it, and, and I'm happy to hear that the Hulk's going to be you know, put on a bigger stage in this movie. I think uh, with this movie, you're going to see a lot of Ultron's minions, a lot of little mini Ultrons you know, flying around. I think he's just it's going to be worse than the aliens in the Avengers. There's going to be even more of them, and he's just going to go to town on a lot of them. So I'm really excited to hear this news and I can't wait to see Hulk smash. Last week I spoke about a poster of Eva Green and how it was banned by the MPAA. Now 
Now, again, I, I didn't think it was cool. Ava Green actually came back with an interview with Vanity Fair and responded to this. She said that, you know what, a lot of this seems like it's all for nothing. A lot of it's just publicity and, and it's not actually really there for a reason. She says it, the, the image doesn't show her nipple or areola and it's implied, yeah, it's implied nudity, but I mean, it's just a sexy picture. And I gotta say, I agree with her 100%. I think if Eva Green wants to show off her body in all its glory, she should go right ahead. So since then, they have released a now edited, um, more soft core version of the poster, I guess you could say. And, and uh, it's, you know, it's not the same, but you still got Eva Green in there looking beautiful. And it's, you know, a character poster and, and I definitely like her character and I want to see more from this movie about her character. I can't wait to see what she does in there. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple trailers and TV spots this week. Uh, first off, we have the Hercules trailer number two. Uh, this one is a little bit more in depth with the story. It shows you more action. Uh, the word is that in this film, you got you got the 12 uh, labors of Hercules. It's based on a, one of the old comic books. In this one, they might not show all the labors, but they're showing you teasers of some of these labors. And it looks really interesting. It gives you a bigger part of the story about what's going to happen. Uh, it looks like there are some, some, you know, possibilities of Hercules maybe the cause of the death of his family. Maybe he's doing everything as a mercenary for hire since the loss of his family. He's trying to atone for his wrongs. I don't know. All I know is that it gives you a little bit more uh, a point of view about what's going on and it looks great I can't wait to see the rock kick some ass and then you have three TV spots all for movies that I'm very much excited for the first is Transformers Age of Extinction this one it's a little character heavy and I like that it gives you a little bit more perspective on the characters also the next one is Guardians of the Galaxy I'm just really super excited for this movie it looks just beyond good I, I really have high expectations for this one now I definitely think it's gonna be a good movie uh, even if it's not a great movie like Captain America I think just being a good movie is uh, a step in the right direction for this new I guess intellectual property in the Marvel Universe the third one is gonna be for Expendables 3 again another movie I'm excited for I am a little disappointed in this one because Sylvester Stallone has uh, said that this movie's gonna be rated PG-13 and he's doing it because he feels like he owes it to the fans and the new fans coming in uh, you're not making a PG-13 for that you should make it R everybody that's watching your movies were fans of you in the, uh, the 80s when you had your R-rated action movies the reason you're making a PG-13 is because you want more people to see it so you can get more money stop lying to us Sly all right, guys, so in theaters this week, the movie that I'm excited for, the one that I, really the only one that I'm paying any interest to this week is called Edge of Tomorrow. It's a sci-fi Groundhog's Day movie starring Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise. This one looks pretty interesting. Emily Blunt, uh, beautiful face, uh, great actress, love the accent, and I think she's going to do a great job. If you've seen any of the pictures, she does have a nice toned up body. She looks like she really dove in head first in this role, and I'm really excited to see what she has to offer. Tom Cruise in this role he looks like uh, almost like a fish out of water a little bit at, at the beginning of the trailers and he looks like he's gonna come around and and figure things out uh, almost like a mixture of what is um, uh, in source code how Jake Gyllenhaal in source code he starts off almost like a fish out of water not realizing what's going on but then he comes to figure out everything and he wants to save the girl I think that's kind of like how this one is in, in Edge of Tomorrow with that nice little ground of dogs day appeal to it over and over and over but you gotta die same thing with source code it's like it's like a nice feel to it I'm definitely excited about this movie um, and I Probably gonna go see it tonight or tomorrow. Okay guys, this week's movie of the week is Lone Survivor. This movie I saw twice in theater and it just came out on DVD, Blu-ray this week. It's about to hit Redbox as well. Um, I picked it up and I just had to watch this one again. When this movie came out in theaters, I went to watch it twice and I was really just blown away by it. I thought that the acting in it was really well done. These these characters, these real life people were portrayed very, very rightly and very accurately. Mark Wahlberg, Ben Foster, Emil Hirsch, and Taylor Kitsch. They did a great job portraying these characters, these, these real life Navy SEALs. They put a realism into this movie, they and Peter Berg as well, that it's almost not seen very often in movies, especially war movies. This movie really makes me harken back to Act of Valor, how that one was very realistic and they used as much uh, real live events as they could to make it that way. 
this one, I right after I was done watching this movie, I went straight into the extras to see some of the interviews with the families, uh, some of the preparation that they did, and I'm just, I was, wow, it's, it's awesome how every single one, like I said, just dove right in and did their best to portray these real people with, with honor and pride. I'm sorry, but here's a spoiler. The movie's title is The Lone Survivor, so there is only going to be one survivor. And as watching this movie, when I was watching it in theater, when I was watching it now, um, it's very touching and heartbreaking when you when you see each full soldier fall. And especially now after I've seen it a couple times, these characters are so well, they're portrayed so well that you don't want to see it happen. At least not in my eyes, I didn't want to see it happen. Emil Hirsch did a great job playing Danny Dietz. Ben Foster did an amazing job. He's one of my favorite actors. He's been under underrated for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. He did a great job as Matthew Axelson. Taylor Kitsch did an amazing job as Mike Murphy. And Mark Wahlberg did a good job as Marcus uh, Luttrell as well. Each character has their own personality in this movie. They, they understand what they're fighting for, which is the other person next to them, their brother. It really does a great job of, of telling you and showing you that this stuff is real, that this stuff happens, people fight for our country, and we lose lives for our country, for our freedom. This movie does a great job of, of telling you and showing you what happens. It's really touching what they do at the beginning, showing and using the real actual pictures of the wives, of the family. And then at the end of the movie, it's it's just touching as well, showing the pictures of all the men lost in the, the Red Wings operation, Operation Red Wings. This is a great movie. It is, it's very, it's visceral, it's action packed. At the same time, it's emotional. And it has it's it has drama in it, it has an, an anticipation in it, and it's just a great movie overall. I definitely recommend that you guys go pick this movie up. This is a buy. This is one of those movies that you put right next to Saving Private Ryan. It's those movies that revolve around something as so serious as war that it, it, and they do such a great job with it. It's definitely worth the buy. It's it's just a great, amazing movie. I definitely recommend you guys go get this one. All right, guys, that's it for movie time this week. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons down below. Leave your comments, questions, inquiries in the comments section, suggestions for the movie of the week as well. Let's have a great conversation this week. We'll see you next time.